And welcome back to Jeff Koinange, live on this inspirational Thursday. What a story, make that. What stories we're hearing from Rahab Omunzi and Anya Kinua, two victims. And I tell you, it's difficult. You probably know this better than I do. It's difficult when you are raped and sodomized and abused and having to talk about it on national television with millions and millions of people watching. But they are, they've come out, they are talking, and many of you are responding. It's incredible how Inspirational Thursday just wakes people up. Esther Sunday, let me just read a couple of tweets. Esther Sunday, you say, wow, you and Anne, you and Anne, are so brave. I love the way you forgave the perpetrators. Great destiny awaits you. Hope Mwanake says, everyone deserves a second chance. Rahab, continue giving hope. Heartbreaking story. Asante Nairobi, you say, breaking free, which is our hashtag tonight, breaking free is a really inspiring story of two brave women. Stanley Mashar Masharia. Masharia says, I believe there are other women who are led astray, but this, these kinds of stories are hard to tell. And then Frida comes out and says, this is the most inspirational show ever. And it's true. I mean, it's, it must be difficult for you all to talk about this. It must be tough, right? But you, you, you feel you have to. Yes. Rahab. Yes. For me, I told myself that I will speak until I die because I realize that so many people go through things in life and they harbor them inside. When we watch the news every day, we see young people in prostitution, they're caught in drugs, with condoms, very young people still in school, underage students. And there's no one to speak to them, but Rahab is here who can connect with them and I'll tell them the truth. Would you tell them, Rahab? Would you tell them? I will tell them the truth. I will tell them sex is good, but at marriage. I will tell them the effects of drugs. I will tell them the effects of, of prostitution. I will, because I've been there, Jeff. I know what it means to try and just keep asking God, why me, why me? I've been through that journey, the depression, all that, to be the woman I am today. It's not, it's not been an easy journey. I'm still walking that journey yeah. whereby people are judging you every single day. You think they are? You think they're judging you? You can always tell. Yeah. I have missed job opportunities because you've, you were seen on TV. I have missed business deals because I was on air or I was on the newspaper. It happens. But you see, that doesn't still stop me. It, I, I am a fighter. I will fight and tell them the truth. Have you been to a job interview where they literally they rejected you and you knew why? Yes, I know. Really? Yes. What happened? They just said, no, we watched you. I was on a certain channel and then I went for the interview and they denied me because the boss watched me on air. So I'll be an embarrassment to the... To the esteemed company. Mm. What yes. about you, Anne? Do you feel victimized? Do you feel like people judge you after what happened to you? Mm. Truth is, not really. The person who actually felt that, and I, I felt bad, I had to ask my parents. My mom said, Nyakenyo, don't ever tell anyone this because people talk about it. Mm. People talk about you and say things behind your yeah. back. How soon after that did you start dating? Were you dating then, by the way, when it happened? You no. didn't? Okay. How soon after that? I can't even remember because I kept going to the VCTs just to confirm I'm not HIV positive. Jeff, every three months I would go to the VCT. Every three months. They asked me, do you have a sexual partner? No. Then why are you doing the test? I just want to know. I've been given the results, it's been six months down the line, I've had the RVs, you're given the RVs to take, and those things are crazy. Mm. There's a time I sat down at outside ICA because I couldn't walk, you get dizzy, you can't move. And I remember going and telling the doctor, I'm not going to drink these things again. And I told me, Nyakenwa, come and show you something. And she took me to the wards and showed me people in beds. These were Nairobi women. People in beds. They cannot move. I told them they're HIV positive. She said, no, they're like you. They've been raped and they were negative. So we're giving them the same drug we're giving you so that they don't get HIV positive. And I told them, and then, like, they can't walk. 
They have to be given a bowl. They put them in bed. They do everything in bed. They are clean from their bed. They can't move. And she told me, so if you don't take them, and that guy was HIV positive, you become HIV positive. I remember the results I got from Nairobi Women's, the final results yeah. of HIV negative. I went to AAR, got tested. I went from AR, I went to ABCT on uh, Moy Avenue. I got tested, and I would do that every, after every three months, mm. I would go, because I knew the window period was three months. I think I did that for two years. Mm. Yeah. Would you get tested, Rehab, would you? Now I'm married, of course. No, before, before, when you were no. on K Street? No. You didn't care? Yeah, I didn't care. You didn't care? I didn't care. You see, when it happens to you as a first person, then and you have someone to talk about it, about it and everything, and they show you a direction, then you can do it. But if it happens to you, and then you realize that the other person who you are with doesn't really care, it's normal, they tell you, I or two. So you get, you actually have in feelings. And the time you realize that, like I was saying, there's a group that will judge you, yeah. there's a group that will support what you're doing. And Jeff, to be very honest, I've worked with amazing, amazing people who have supported what me and Anna are doing. Amazing people. Platforms that have been given by the media, they have given me platforms. I've worked with amazing churches. I've worked with a system unit, that is DJ Mo and Size It. I've worked with the ex Dela, the best, mm. the best guy. Dela, yes, my man. I've worked with him. Yeah. I've worked with Team JKL. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, he's, he's, a, he's a real true story. So ex Dela, Yeah. You no, know, the guy who has more Twitter followers than me, but that's another story. Uh, he, he comes up to me and says, look, um, you need to boost your Twitter numbers. Yeah. Uh, some guy, well, who does that? Who does that to, to the, you know, a yeah. competition? Yeah. You need to boost your numbers. And he says, I've got some people. I'll, I'll bring them your way. So he sends these people my way, and, and you know, DJ Platinum and Marcus yeah. and the other, yeah, those yeah. guys, and, and, and Dessert. Uh, you know, he sends them all our way, right? Yeah. My way. And, and you guys, you know, I don't judge. Yeah. I don't judge. You guys, you start, you come here, and you start boosting our numbers, and you, and you do what you do. Yeah. I didn't question. I didn't yeah. even ask who these people were. Yeah. I guess I was sort of like that guy in the New Testament who says, you know, let who, he who is without sin you know, cast the first stone. But yeah. I'm not saying I'm him, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's incredible how the world is so small. You people end up, and I find out you're Team JKL, yeah. and you are who you are. And I don't judge. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. And you see, not amazing, as much as we work with you, there's a lot of professionalism in this team. And that is what we got when we when we joined. Oh, I forgot Steve Boy as well. You know, I yeah, Steve. Steve yeah, the guy who does it. <laughs> I, I just remembered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of professionalism, and that is what we give as a team. And like you said yesterday, we are a team, and we love what we're doing because we are the best so far in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And so you find that by the time you were getting to know about us, yeah. when you look at what we've done, where we've been and this far we've come it's just an incredible yeah, journey no, it's an incredible story yeah. I, honestly and i you know and i hope other people will judge people for what they are not yes. what their past yes has been mm -hmm. right True. if we're all to be judged by our past where would it be i would Nowhere. be dead <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere. Yeah. where would you be oh god <laughs> do you do you if you were to live your life again would would you not want to have that incident that happened at that s September 9th at 6 a.m.? Would you want to erase that from your life? Truth is, no. Because if, because I look at it this way, six years ago, Jeff, if that hadn't happened, right now, I'd either be a hoe, really? where she was. Really? Yes, because the lifestyle I was living was just crazy. So you were heading down Rehab's way? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably I'd be there. Or yeah. someone's clandestine, as they say. Mm. It. Yeah. Or on K Street. Yeah, on K Street. Hey. Yeah, so I think when the incident happened, it was a good thing. Mm. I turned my life around. I did change. Rehab, would you want to re-race what happened to you at 14 if you were to do it again? Um, to be very honest with you, this may sound very weird, 
but if I had to do it again for destiny and survive and become the woman I am today, I would go back. Because today I'm influencing more young people, especially in schools and in prisons and in colleges and campuses, that I, I don't think if I lived a normal life, what you call a normal life, I, would, I think I would have been a shy girl or mm. something. Yeah. When you talk to these girls, do they come up to you afterwards and say... They write me notes. I have files and boxes of notes I've gotten from what schools. What do they say? What do they say? There was, a, there was someone who said, not even girls only, even men write. And there's a man who wrote this, and he said, uh, Hi, Rehab. I, I am HIV positive, and I don't know how to tell my wife. So for the last one year, he's been telling his, every time they get to bed, he tells his wife, That's what he's been doing. For a year. For a year. And he got to a point, his wife pestered him so much, he said, Ah, where are you going to That's what he told his wife. So his wife went and got tested. And after he got, the wife got tested, he still told her, we do period Jaisha, let's wait three months. And now she's tested again, and he doesn't know what to do. So he's asking Rab, what should I do? Not only that, there are so many people out there, Jeff. Uh, in that September, when I went to Nairobi Women's, and I didn't know about it, we just found out, it just happened. To, there was a nurse who was staying in that flat, flat where the, the girl was staying, and she said, no, run to Nairobi Hospital. And we went there, and I hope they still do this. The treatment is free for rape victims. It is absolutely free. You get tested, and the first uh, injection they give is hepatitis B. They actually told me it's worse than HIV, which I didn't know. I told them I had vaccination, but they said, no, they can't risk. So they, I had to go the six months again of vaccination for the hepatitis B and a whole month of ARVs. Mm. Yeah. All that is free. The counseling, everything is free. I hope they still do it. I really hope Nairobi women you still do that for the young women out here. We highly appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And when you talk to those people, when you talk to these young girls, they open up and you find out. Sometimes it's not their fault. Sometimes it's their fault. Maybe they've gone wrong somewhere. But most of the times it's not their yeah. fault. But Rahab, I mean, I mean, look, in this day and age, everyone, and we hear stories, you know, the university kids, they want that vitz, they want that first car, they want the lifestyle, they want that apartment. And they do anything to do that. Do they tell you these things? Do they say, look, this is the lifestyle. This, it is what it is. You will hear all that. People will do anything to make money. But let us go back to our African morals. Let us go back to where, when we were growing up, I remember my grandmother teaching me how to cook. We would go to shags during holidays. Let us go back to that place where you want to buy your own car because you've worked hard for it. Mm -hmm. Not because a man has bought you that car. What a man can do, you can also do. He has worked hard for his money. So it would be nice to put value on yourself as a woman, put value on yourself as a man. Why are you with this man? Are you with him because of his money or because you're adding value in his life? Are you with this woman because she has money or because what value? In fact, I tell my friends, even in Team JKL, what value is this woman adding in your life? Because you were okay before you met her. So what value are they adding in your life? If they're not adding value in your life, just and the relationship yeah. work hard that is why you have two hands yeah are you guys yeah. listening are you listening <laughs> okay um advice because there are women out there young ladies out there who've been raped who've been sodomized who've been brutalized abused what do you tell them man what do you tell them look in that camera there what, what do you tell those ladies my advice um uh, if you get raped run to the nearest hospital You'll always get advice on where to go. Uh, secondly, learn to talk to people. Mm. I bottled up a lot of things. I remember I only talk to the counselor, and my friends, Sarah, Liz, they would take turns to take me to the hospital just to make sure I go and see that counselor. Mm. Learn to talk it out. It really helps to talk it out. I might be crying right now because I remember, yes. Yeah. But it's not as bad as that time. That time, I wouldn't get home past six. Because I'm so scared, I just think this girl will appear. Hmm. Yeah. So please learn to talk about did it. Did you ever see him again? No. You never did? No. Would you recognize him if you saw him? I don't think I would now. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I do. Very serious. 
Oh, you don't have to be so specific. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, w w what does he think of what happened to you? Team Anne, all the way. Let's support you. It's a healing time. Yeah. Gonna marry him? Yes. Gonna have little babies with him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if one of those babies is a girl and she grows up, then you're gonna tell her. If there's something we've done with Rahab, it's sex education. Yeah, I know some schools deny us that opportunity because yeah. no one wants to talk about it. Sex education, no one wants to talk about it. But it's time we tell our little children mm. about it. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely, Rahab, your turn. Sex workers watching you. Former clients watching you, <laughs> politicians watching you, and they're saying, Rahab, don't you dare mention my name. <laughs> they're looking out there, they're saying, don't you dare, because you know them, <laughs> and you've seen them naked. <laughs> Sorry. Your turn, Rahab, my bad. Um, I want to tell my listeners and my viewers that we all have gifts and God places gifts in our lives. How we shape those gifts and how we give out those gifts depend on us. If you're a politician, use your politics to do good, not harm. If you're a sex worker, there is hope. There are programs for sex workers. There are companies helping sex workers get off the street. Join this groups go and join these women groups that can help you get even money at the county level and and just do something better with your life know that god loves you and that there is more to you than what you're settling for and don't settle for less schools that are watching invite us we are very open of course at a fee to teach about sex education we will come there running we need those opportunities companies and corporates invite us we will talk to you you make that difference yes just got a, t a text in from Dr. Njoki. She's a psychotherapist. Do I say that right? Psychotherapist. She, uh, I met her a while back at Ahmed Nasir's housewarming, and she says, ask Anne to give me a call. Dr. Njoki. Okay. All right, she's watching. She, she, she obviously wants to talk to you more. Okay. Because you look like you're still in pain. Uh, you, you, honestly, you look like you're... I mean, you're crying six years later. For her, it's... I get relief when I speak about my life. Mm. Every time I speak, it's healing for mm. me. So since she's now starting to talk, speak, yes. then it's going to take her a while as she's accepting it. And a time will come where she will smile about it. Yeah. Not that she doesn't feel the pain, because yeah. I, I press through some places and I shiver because I remember. Right. Yes. Do you ever pass that place in Zimmerman? Do you ever pass there? Rahab, to be there. When was it? Last month? Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, for said, a healing program. Yes, for a healing, for a healing said, process. She took you to the said. spot. After, yes. after the show, we drove there. <laughs> and? Then this watchman just came out of nowhere and she's rolling down her window. How can you roll down your window? Mm -hmm. And you thought, uh-oh. But she was really scared and it helped, but it helped her. Yeah. It helped and I told her, what I actually told her is, we all have scars, yeah. Jeff. And our scars, you have to wear them proudly. Hmm. You understand? They are, that is your past. Yeah. And your past will never define your future. There's a great future ahead of you. This is So those are just scars. Absolutely. Yeah. You'll heal, my dear. You will heal. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Oops, before I forget. <laughs> Since you are Team Jake, who wants the green one? Because you're wearing green, you might as well keep the theme. <laughs> and the bag, you get the bag. <laughs> After all, you got the maid anyway. Brand new yeah. Branding. Uh, Branding. <laughs> I hope that fits. <coughs> My bad. Is that right? We do the branding. Is that okay? Yeah. But I'll give you guys a book. I'll give you a book as well. You gave me a book, yeah? Yeah. You, don't, you, you signed this to me, didn't you? Yes. Listen to this. It says, Jeff Koinanga, thank you for being somebody who makes everybody feel like, like somebody. somebody. Yes. Oh, I am somebody. Yes. Amen to that. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for giving us this opportunity yeah. to even do your branded t-shirts. Anytime. Yes. Anyone who wants branded t-shirts, talk to these people.
Anyone who wants Twitter numbers, talk to Extin Della. <laughs> <laughs> Team JKL. Team JKL. My director wants to know, Okedi, he wants to know what's, what's with the, uh, the razor blade on your chest? <laughs> uh, he's, he's asking. Uh, for me, this is very symbolic. This was a gift from my husband. And he told me that every time I miss him, I can always wear him on my neck. And that when I look at it, you know, coming from the life I'd lived, I was very verbal. So he told me, Rahab, I give you this to be razor sharp upstairs. Mm. Yeah. So every time I look at it, I know I have to read, I have to be smart. Yes. Wow. It's a new generation of Kenyans. Yeah. Rahab Omunzi. Say hello to your husband for me, eh? I will. He's a good man. He is. He's a good man. He is. Anya Kinyua? Yes. This too shall pass. <laughs> Thank you. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. <laughs> Incredible stories, folks. I mean, th and this happens every day. You may know somebody who knows somebody who has had something done to them that's sometimes irreversible. Rahab and Anne, they're talking about it. They're speaking out there and they're speaking to others. Come out. Let's speak. Let's talk. That's the only way to heal at the end of the day. Keep tweeting at Rahab Renewed, at Nyakenua capital A. At Koinanga Jeff, the hashtag is one of Rahab's four books, simply called Breaking Free. That is our hashtag tonight. Keep talking, keep tweeting, because after all, you're not going to get these kinds of guests anywhere else. Let's face it, you're, gonna get, you're not going to get these kinds of stories anywhere else. But we talk about it on Inspiration Thursday so that we can inspire, even if it's just one person out there who's being abused, who's being sodomized, raped, dehumanized, you name it. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Next week, as always, is a new week, new show, new guests, new topics, but the only thing that's consistent is that it is the same time and the same place. Wednesdays and Thursdays, right here on Kenya's television network, KTN. Thanks so much for watching. Good night, good luck, and God bless. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs>